All right, welcome to the 2021 edition of the WebKit Contributors Meeting. Uh, I am Brian Cardell, and I'm a developer advocate at Egalia. If you're wondering who is Egalia and what do they have to do with WebKit, I will briefly explain. Uh, we are a worker-owned cooperative of people working in over 20 countries around the world, and this year we are celebrating our 20th anniversary of uh, trying to help build and advocate for healthy ecosystems around free and open source software. Uh, our main area of work is browsers, but as you know, that is a really big stack involving graphics and multimedia and networking, compilers, and we work on all of it. Uh, we're active participants in several standards development organizations, and we're actually top contributors to all of the engines. Uh, but we have a really special place in our heart for WebKit. We've been here for a long time, and we're the maintainers of two official WebKit ports. One is the GTK port that focuses on the Linux desktop, and that is the basis for GNOME Web or Epiphany, if you're familiar with those. And it's also the basis for all of those embedded web views that are used for applications on the desktop. But also WPE, which I'm really excited about, uh, is the official WebKit port for embedded devices, and it's sort of designed from the ground up with these use cases in mind. And uh, it is currently widely used in embedded and about three quarters of our WebKit related income comes from embedded devices. What's exciting about this, I think, is that there are billions of these devices and it's just growing. And so while we think about browsers and we talk about, you know, the browser on your phone or the browser on your desktop, those are the main two that we'll experience in those devices. There's just two, but uh, throughout the day, the average user, not just the tech user, will encounter devices that have uh, interfaces built with these technologies constantly um, in their cars, on trains and airplanes, in their living room as they sit down and use their TV or their entertainment console, in their kitchens, uh, at stores and point of sale systems and kiosks, uh, at gas stations. I mean, they're just literally everywhere and, and they're growing. What we think about this that's really cool is that uh, WebKit uh, and Egalia work really well together because we help expand WebKit's relevance and also its diversity of investment. And with that comes new insights and use cases that we consider and uh, a way to think about different things that we can prioritize because we can afford to. We think that's really important because prioritization is really, really hard. Just as an example of what makes this difficult is that it's not always immediately obvious like where the investment should be. Uh, we have many, many users uh, throughout the system. End users are obviously the most critically important, but any failure to meet the expectations of these along the way uh, prevent them from getting the things that they need to get a really good experience. <coughs> Uh, so we think that's great and we think we can do more. We're going to talk about some of the more things that we're doing, uh, but we'll start with a review of 2021. Uh, when I came and talked here last year, I mentioned that we were the number two committer in overall commits in WebKit with almost 15%, 15.5% of all commits. I mentioned at the time that that's like as of right now. Uh, and in fact, by the end of the year, that number grew. Currently, as we're presenting uh, now, we're sitting at about 16.4% of all commits. And we're hopeful that that number will go up, but it could go down by the end of the year. It's not really important, the specific number. It's just to say, look how much we do in the WebKit community. And not all of what we do is code commits. So we're going to talk about what we did in 2021, and we're going to break it down by a couple of different themes. Uh, we'll talk about collaboration, how the WebKit community is working together and communications, how we work outside the immediate WebKit community with other people. We'll talk about new stuff that we brought to either specific ports or to WebKit itself, and some compatibility uh, efforts that we did in 2021 on WebKit. And uh, we'll talk about performance and code quality improvements and in infrastructure and quality assurance uh, improvements that we did in 2021. So first, just a really brief slide to say that uh, I think we did better with collaboration this year, uh, not just the Gallia, but the, the whole community. And I'm glad we could play a part in that. The uh, Egalia collaboration on JSC has been really, really, really great to, to see happen. That happened after our last contributors meeting. Uh, Slack, which was set up just before the last contributors meeting, is 
huge for us, uh, being able to talk to people uh, asynchronously in a conversational media is really, really good. Um, one of the things that has been really, really good for is that occasionally it's not enough and we're able to recognize that during a conversation at some point and set up an ad hoc meeting. And we have had a couple of those. And I think that that has been really, really useful. Um, one thing that came rather recently is some increased DevRel coordination, which I think is also turning into a really, really helpful thing. So that's great. And we think it's a really good start. Another thing that we did in 2021 that we do every year, but it's a little hard to quantify, is um, Egalia brings a lot of expertise and person power to bear on the problems. And we also are situated in a company that has people who work on other browsers. And so we think this is really, really valuable, though, like I say, hard to quantify, uh, that we can do more and work on more standards and have more in insightful opinions and be involved in more conversations and sort out more problems uh, of discussion with other engines by just existing. So we think that's really good. And we did a lot of that this year. Uh, outside of that though, within the larger broad web community, um, one of the things that we have focused on a lot this year is like different kinds of conversations than we normally have. Like we, we typically get stuck in the same sorts of conversations that involve frequently a lot of speculation and people just don't have the information. They don't understand like, how does it work really? Um, like what are the challenges? What are the barriers? So we've been talking a lot about how the web technology that is basically the foundation of sort of everything at this point is a commons. It's sort of like the roads and bridges. And it seems like it, diversifying investment in that is a really, really good idea for a whole bunch of reasons. And how can we build a really healthy web ecosystem? Uh, we have been talking in part of that about why we invest in what and how, especially in WebKit and using that as examples. Uh, but we also have other uh, things that we're pursuing to improve these communications, like uh, open prioritization, which is uh, an effort that I'll mention later, uh, that gets into some of those hard problems and illustrating them and bringing them into the conversation. Uh, we're also looking forward to driving a larger conversation on these subjects at TPAC. My colleague Eric Meyer will be giving a talk at TPAC. Uh, if you get a chance to check that out, I think it will be really good. Okay, let's talk about cool new stuff that we brought. Um, some of these I'm gonna you know, highlight a lot and some of them we're gonna kind of breeze past in no really particular order other than because I think they're interesting. Um, Off-screen canvas is, I think, super interesting. Uh, my colleague Chris Lord is gonna give a talk about this, which is great later on, have a breakout session. Um, so, but one of the things that's interesting here is like when I talk about that, uh, a lot of developers that I talk to go, wow, that's a cool demo, but um, I don't know. I mean, I see why that's really useful for them, but it's not really for me, right? Because it's kind of niche. Like I, I don't make a lot of things with Canvas. So the really interesting thing that I want to highlight here is that uh, embedded use cases often have a lot in common with those dashboard widgets that were sort of Apple's, you know, demonstrable thing, interesting thing that you could do with Canvas. Um, whereas these are not a lot like the things that you see on the web. Uh, they are actually pretty common sorts of interfaces in embedded devices. So that let us say this is a really high priority. It's important for us to do well on this. Um, but what is actually really interesting about this is that while you might think it's niche because you don't program against the low-level API, chances are actually pretty good that you do use the canvas. Uh, and it is very, very good that you will experience the canvas. Uh, in the HTTP archive data, canvas and video appear about the same amount of times. And I don't know anybody who would make the claim that video is a niche kind of thing. And the reason for that is because of abstractions over things for like maps and data viz. And this is a really, really cool demo that I want to show here. So this is uh, by Andreas Huvichar from the Maps for HTML Community Group showing uh, open layers, very common uh, mapping library. And uh, because the original canvas is uh, blocks the main thread, uh, you get this really, really janky experience even on this, which is actually pretty high end uh, by comparison device. So that's terrible. This is a very, very ter terrible experience. And I promise you it is much, much, much worse on uh, embedded systems. 
Uh, whereas using the off-screen canvas, you can see how this is without any real work other than taking it off the main thread and having the opportunity to parallelize some things, you get this really, really nice experience. And again, on embedded devices, this can mean the difference between something that runs at one frame per second or less and 60 frames per second. So it's really, really huge. But the nice thing is that even though it was not really highly prioritizable by web community necessarily. Um, it is a thing that we were able to prioritize and everyone will get the benefit. So everybody who uses maps will eventually see a real world benefit to this, which is huge. Um, focus visible is another thing that I would like to highlight. Um, this is part of our open prioritization experiment. Uh, where we began this conversation about how it is very difficult to prioritize and how diversifying investment in the platform is really good and we should explore lots of ways to do that. Um, Focus Visible is the project that was chosen among uh, six other projects in different areas of the platform, uh, asking for different levels of investment and so on. Egalia matched the funds and we did that work early this year. Uh, it is currently sitting in the code base. It is in technology preview, I believe, behind an experimental flag. Uh, what's interesting here, though, is that last miles are hard, and it seems that we have some challenges and disagreements that are taking a while to work out. Uh, so that is also an interesting thing that we will be bringing sort of back into the larger conversation because inevitably people want to know, like, where is it? <laughs> Uh, so I think that's a good, healthy discussion. I look forward to having it. Uh, aspect ratio is another really interesting thing that uh, we worked on this year. Uh, Jen Simmons uh, from Apple now uh, did the pioneering and champion of this. And I just want to throw a couple of party hats on here, uh, not just because we did it, but for the fact that we have a feature that expresses this critically important thing that is really, really important to responsive designs. Uh, so I think that's really, really great. Another thing similarly that's exciting that we worked on in this area is gaps. Uh, gaps seem in, you know, in retrospect, like very obvious that we should have that. Unlike margins and paddings, these let you express the space between elements. So just the parts that are in red on here. So again, the long overdue things for the web platform, they seem obvious in retrospect, but now we have it and Egalia did that work. So that's great. Uh, another thing that um, we worked on is WebXR. Uh, there will also be a great breakout talk on this. Uh, you can see some interesting demo here that uh, I think is really, really exciting. Looking forward to seeing that breakout talk. Um, so some other things just to quickly get through this. Uh, CSS containment is, I think, uh, interesting. It's very interesting because uh, I think there is not a super compelling use case for it on its own. Uh, it is a nice performance boost on some use cases, but it's why you would not prioritize that work necessarily initially. However, um, standards move forward. There are follow-on proposals for container queries, which rely on having containment and WebKit didn't have any containment, much less uh, the level that they're specifying now. So. I'm really, really happy that we were able to do this work and get WebKit caught up in this area because it will pay off in the end. Did some things on position sticky. This is actually not a new feature, um, but we did a lot of a lot of work on this. That's interesting. Uh, we also worked on WebAssembly 32-bit support, and we're still working on that. We'll talk a little bit about that later. We added HTTP2 support to WPE, which is really long overdue, but we were able to get that done this year and uh, WebGL2 for WPE and Angle support, which we talked a little bit about last year, is still underway. A really exciting thing, I think, that we did that is not uh, about a specific web standards is uh, we made this experimental Android support for WPE, which there will also be a, a, another session about that later, and I hope you're able to attend that because I think it's super interesting and exciting and there's cool demos and things. Uh, another thing we did that I think is really interesting and noteworthy is creating an a canary version of Epiphany. Uh, other browsers have like canary versions, but uh, Epiphany did not. We don't have a kind of similar thing in WebKit. So I find this actually really, really handy personally, and I hope you check it out. I think it's cool. 
Uh, web compatibility. Let's talk about web compatibility. In 2021, we did a lot of work on web compatibility under for lots of different reasons. But one effort that we worked on was Compat 2021. Uh, now, a lot has been said about this, but I will keep it brief. And I would just like to point out a thing here. This is a chart from the Compat 2021 website that is looking at the stable. Uh, this is what real users were experiencing. Now, I have blocked out in gray, don't get confused by that, the right-hand side of this chart, because what I want to point out is that for all real users, like the real people using the web, uh, the Compat score was miserable on all browsers, between 60 and 70%. Now, the other thing I want to point out is just before this gray box, you will see that in the shipping browsers, these other browsers jump up. And that's because they have been working on this for a while in their experimental branches. Uh, and so they, they jump up much faster. Now, the two things I want to point out here is one, we were late to the game, but uh, we caught up really fast. So that's something I think we can be proud of. And we have made the situation so much better than it was. That is really, really great. But I think that there's something here to the idea of finding certain places where we can really coordinate together to define some success criteria and priorities. I think that's kind of a kind of a success story. Um, so I, I think it's really cool. Uh, we also worked on performance and code improvements for uh, scrolling. Uh, we have had some uh, help in this area from some people at Apple who had interesting insights, for example. Uh, we're still working on that, but it's getting better all the time. Uh, we are also working on accelerated SVG rendering, which we talked about last year, and there will be a breakout session, uh, another talk by uh, Nico on that later. I think that should be awesome. I'm also really excited about that. It's very closely related to the things I was saying about off-screen canvas, very similar, but those will ultimately bring to all of WebKit some really great improvements, and I think that's great. Uh, now, there also is the WP impl implementation of WebXR, not the stuff that's in WebCore, but the actual implementation. And uh, that is cool, a thing that we're still working on. We're also working on the GTK4 port. Um, that's almost ready. It's just missing some accessibility support that we'll finish before we ship it. And uh, also interesting to note, although I can't say a lot about it, it's still experimental. Uh, but we're working on a new graphics pipeline that we're very hopeful for, for WPE. Uh, in multimedia, we added support for the WPE port to, uh, to all those standards using GStreamer. Uh, this is really interesting for web developers using WPE in their devices because it suddenly enables new features that are relevant for multimedia applications more than we had before. So this is the list of some of them, and some of them are still in development. Uh, in JSC, uh, we have done a lot of optimizations for performance, looking at the uh, the optimizers. Uh, one of those layers, we improved the LLN support. We've also increased QA efforts. Uh, we have much faster hardware for ARMv7 and MIPS build bots. Uh, testing scripts now recover from many hardware issues. So uh, since we're clearly into infrastructure and quality assurance topics now, let's talk about these. Uh, We've had a lot of progress in setting up the early warning system layout bot for GTK. Uh, that's good. We also added initial web driver support in COG, and we're getting ready to play, replace Python 2 with Python 3 in the tooling. Uh, we have also uh, continued to work on just gardening to keep the tree as green as possible. Uh, and then the last thing I'll mention here is uh, last year we set up a uh, WebKit search function so you could search through the code in WebKit. Uh, we got a lot of positive feedback about that. It's it's gotten some you know real real use. I mean, there's not millions of people who work on WebKit, but uh, the people who do have used it, a number of them, and found it very helpful. So we've done some new investments in working on that, the reliability and things. Um, this is a slide that I'm calling uh, non-green layout boss for lack of a better example, uh, lack of a better name. Uh, the one on the left is for GTK, and the one on the right is uh, WPE, and you don't need to worry about if you can read them any more than sort of a spark line. Uh, but they're just to show that these are the things that sort of prevent the release from being green, the, the bot that checks it for, for layouts. Uh, I would just point out that um, we have had some small regressions in flakiness over 2021, but things are a lot more in control for the release bots than they were before. Um, 
these charts show the automated layout test coverage and the coverage is growing. We're passing more tests steadily, which is one of our main goals. It, and uh, we keep the failures more under control. Uh, this has required more time investment from our side over the years, but we're actually very happy with the results. So that's 2021. Let's talk about 2022. Um, there are a lot of standards and things that are on our roadmap that we do plan to work on and invest in. Uh, so we plan to continue to work on the SVG stuff. Uh, we're also working on MathML. Uh, we're interested in web speech in the implementations for uh, our ports. Uh, WebXR, obviously, we're interested in uh, HTML interactive form validation in WPE. So WPE works a little different. It doesn't use like the native Q, like QT controls or something. So we have some things that we're interested in getting in there. Uh, we're interested in uh, taking up HTTP3 now that HTTP2 is done. Uh, WebAuthn2 is uh, kind of interesting to us. Uh, we have an open question on this. We would like uh, Apple's uh, opinion on whether they would be willing to accept some uh, work if we were to contribute on this because this uh, some specific work in WebAuthn2 uh, blocks other specs. So we would really like to move that along. Uh, bundling is a thing that we're interested in. Uh, we're, we're working on, we realize that's a really hard problem. We're trying to move it forward, uh, collaborate with a lot of other people. Uh, we have a, a bunch of uh, features in MSE2, MSE v2. Uh, we're continuing to work on WebAssembly 32-bit and uh, the Angle support. Uh, for WebGL2 uh, and Media Recorder backend for WPE. There are other standards that we are dramatically interested in in some way. Uh, how much we will or can work on these depends on a lot of things. Uh, we would love to find other people to invest in some of this work. And if not, we will continue to be interested and do what we can. Uh, those are container queries, CSS layers, uh, more powerful selectors. Particularly, we're very interested in has, but there are some other ones. Um, inert is very interesting. I'm looking forward to the proposal about that. I worked on that proposal. There has been a polyfill. It is a couple of polyfills, actually, that are very widely used of that. And it was the second runner up in our open prioritization that got a lot of investment. So it would be interesting to see what happens there. I'm also very interested in web speech, uh, not just in a port, not just those things, but this is another historically unique thing like MathML and SVG. Uh, it was not a standards track document and yet it has a lot of interoperability. Uh, its architecture is not well specified. It does not meet a lot of use cases, but there are a lot of use cases. Uh, so there is interest in this in W3C. I am giving a talk at TPAC this year along with Leonie Watson and some other people to restart this conversation. I believe that there will probably be a workshop and I hope that other people from WebKit can attend that. I look forward to talking to it, to you about it. Uh, we're also interested in a lot of things that are happening in OpenUI. We even have been working on some things. Uh, it would be great for other WebKit uh, folks to be interested and involved in some of that if you're interested. Uh, pan and zoom for the web, I think is very, very interesting. Uh, I won't say more than that other than, uh, things like maps and product, uh, image views and photography. Uh, there are so many use cases that want to pan and zoom an element. And currently those use, uh, an embarrassing amount of JavaScript and trickery to accomplish those. The web has no primitive for that and it probably should. Uh, collaboration, I, I guess there's a, a thing that we can mention here, which is uh, Egalia likes to to make things smoother. Um, we have been looking into a thing last year, and we're going to continue to work on it this year, and we would like some feedback. Um, internally, we have a lot of WebKit reviewers, and we want to make sure that when we ask for reviews from someone who is not an Egalian, that we're giving a very, very high kind of signal to noise ratio so that if you see something there, you know that like it's not going to take your time and involve a bunch of back and forth and you can go ahead and like make the time to prioritize having a look at it because it's high quality. So we're, we're doing some things internally to improve that situation and we really hope it helps. 
Uh, there are some other collaboration opportunities I would like to mention to the larger WebKit community. One is that we have been doing this podcast with the theme of the health of the web ecosystem, and we're going to do at least one WebKit edition. We've had guests from many other uh, projects and areas of the platform, different people with different specialties. Uh, I know Sony has members who are going to join this, and I would like to just open it up if you're interested in maybe participating in that one, or maybe we do another one. Uh, get in touch with me. Uh, MathML is back on a standards track, and it's done that through MathML Core. Uh, this is specifying how MathML actually does its work and how it integrates with the platform, resolving its oddities in the way that SVG has spent the last few years doing. MathML is trying to catch up in that respect. This is going to require some work in WebKit, so having a couple of people from WebKit involved in that, besides us, would be really great. And uh, we're open to other suggestions about how we can collaborate better. Just let us know. Uh, in terms of performance and code improvements, we're going to look at some things around GPU process isolation. I think Apple has been doing some really work, really interesting work there, and we're, we're looking to take some of that learning into our own stuff. We're also looking at maybe support for real-time threads or kind of better prioritization for things, uh, including maybe for scroll improvements. We're not really entirely sure about all of how that's going to work yet, but uh, also because WPE is like really does a lot with the GPU. We're also looking into OpenGL ES3 support for WPE as well as the new graphics pipeline. And we're also going to finish up our uh, GTK4 accessibility. <clears throat> uh Okay, in terms of JSC, in 2022, we want to keep closing the feature and performance gaps in the 32-bit JSC. Uh, we aim to ship WebAssembly implementation and do enough work on the low-level plumbing to enable an optimizing WebAssembly compiler and the last tier in JSC, FTL, which has never been available for 32-bit architectures. Uh, we'll also explore other performance improvements like concurrent compilation, which is also unavailable on 32-bit at the moment. Um, the other main line of development will see us expand our maintenance efforts and we'll consolidate our fuzzing strategy. Uh, finally, we'll keep improving our testing infrastructure and new, more powerful ARM v7 and MIPS machines, uh, continued improvements to our testing scripts and systems. Uh, another thing we would like to do in multimedia is, uh, we have a lot of expertise in multimedia, like really a lot. And uh, currently, all of the WebRTC stuff uses sort of the same implementation, and we have some ideas. We hope to create an initial backend proposal for how this might work, and we're looking forward to getting that done this year. Uh, in terms of infrastructure and quality assurance, we would like to evaluate how well common third-party players work and fix relevant bugs. We would like to deploy a WPE security bot, uh, address and thread sanitizer, and add some fuzzers to our testing infrastructure for security. Uh, we would like to improve our browser perf-dotagalia.com and the procedures around it. Uh, we would like to deploy WPE build and test bots for ARM version 64 architecture. Uh, this is actually after this meeting, but still this year, <laughs> we'll get started on that. Um, <laughs> and also improvements to MIPS bots, which is in a similar situation. And finally, we would like to deploy an early warning system GTK web driver bot. And we would like to release WP on Android uh, prototype. Uh, the current work that we'll be doing here has a lot to do on multimedia support. Uh, the way we do things on multimedia and the way Android does things on multimedia leaves some things to be figured out. So we hope to get that done. All right, that's all I have. Thanks. Do you have any questions? We would be happy to take them.